My name is TJ Gamble and this is Bruzel. But what does it actually take to get one of these in the state of Alabama? It's all told we spent about 400 bucks, but this is what we got. That's a good whiskey. There's a lot going on there. All right, we are live this Monday and it has been a long, eventful weekend. Hopefully everybody, at least if you if you got an extra day off, have been enjoying it. Uh, was it, not really expecting a huge crowd, right? This is this is one of those weekends where a lot of folks have things planned. They go do stuff, and then we were dumb enough to go up against Game Seven of the NBA Semifinals. <laughs> so you're a little crazy if yeah, you're hanging we, out with us. So, we know where Bruiser Will is. Yeah, we know Will's probably not going. If Will's in here, he's got two screens up. Yes, that's for sure. Courtney, first time. Catching alive. Well, I appreciate you joining us. We just gotta say, go Celtics. Go Celtics. That's yeah. Will's team is the Celtics, so we are going to be cheering for them. Hopefully, I'll be able to catch the end of that game after this stream, but we'll see. Nair, thanks for the recommendations on Frey Ranch. That's a fantastic bottle, and it, it may make our conversation tonight. We'll see. Um, we've got a lot of things to discuss, a lot of things to try. First, the first thing we're gonna do is to get a little low budget palate cleanser here. And this is a Pappy Van Winkle 23 year family reserve. So obviously the low budget is a joke, but this was compliments of Chad and Sarah of It's Bourbon Night. We did a tasting notes video where we kind of poked fun, poked fun of their tasting notes. And so they, uh, they reached out and, and enjoyed the video and said they would send us a little sample of this Pappy 23, which I don't think I've ever had. Um, I've had the 22, I think it was. I've definitely had the 15, but I don't think I've ever had this 23. So we're going to give this a shot. Yeah, Daniel, it's not cheap. Of course it's... <laughs> yes. um, Thanks, Chad and Sarah. Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, Nate says hello there, Jill. Hey, Uncle Nate. Oh, my goodness. Now, has anybody in the chat ever had Pappy 23? And if wow. so, let me know your thoughts. I think the 15 is fantastic, but it's got a little more oak than I want. Just a, just a, it's really subtle. Um, I think this one's probably going to be a lot more oak than I want. Yeah. I, you don't, oh, it doesn't smell like it, it does it? It doesn't oh. smell like it at all. It oh, my goodness. Smells delicious. Now, this one's proofed down. Um, the 15-year... Okay is 107 proof, and this one's 95.6 oh, wow. proof, according to our sample bottle here. Man, that smells good. Yeah, Jameson, we're gonna, we're gonna go hard. We, couple of other things. Y'all see these samples right here? These samples are Canadian whiskey from Cat's Eye Distillery, and they sent us three 27-year-old Canadian whiskeys all at 150 plus proof, at 155 plus proof. So I'm gonna have to try those and decide what? if we wanna buy the entire barrel on any of those. What? Yeah. Oh my God. Along with obviously the title, which is the five bottles I can't live without. Spoiler alert, I can live without any whiskey, but I am gonna talk about the five that I absolutely will keep on the bar at all times. That is fantastic. Lord have mercy. Yeah, a little too much oak on the yeah. palate. Still delicious, but it is not as good as the 15. There are so many interesting things going on there, though. And it could be because it's proofed down. Normally with Pappies, I get a ton of, like, red fruit. I just get bright, kind of floral, fruity notes. This one is much more vanilla to me. Like, it's a lot more kind of vanilla oak. There's too much oak. Is $48 a lot for a pour of Pappy 23 one ounce? No, that is dirt cheap for any place I've ever seen it at a bar. Normally, a 23, it may be a full two ounce pour, is going to be like two or $300. It's kind of crazy. Hmm. Eagle Rare, two of the three places, and Frey Ranch at the three, stop, three stops in Georgia. Yeah, it's all over the place, uh, and, and it's fantastic. I need to reach out again, see if they won't let us get in on that barrel pick. This just smells really, really it, good. It tastes good. It smells better than it tastes, but I would still have to say the 15 is considerably better than this to me. I don't think I remember the 15. 
Celtics down 10 already? Come Lord on. have mercy. I, I mean, I got no skin in the game, but it's still really early. They were down three games to none. That didn't work out too well for the uh, for the Heat. What's up, Dusty? Okay, that second sip is better. The second sip is better? Well, you're just nursing yours, and I drank That's mine. That's what I like do. I, I nurse it. I don't I wish I'd drink it like it. you. Why do you drink it so fast? <laughs> I took baby sips. No, you did not. I just took them really fast. You just go like, Wah. Ron, joining the Five Proof membership. Appreciate it, Ron. Make sure you uh, get over on Discord and hit us up to get into the supporter-only channel. If there are any members in here, um, let us know. If you're not in that Discord, we'll get you in that supporter-only chat. Uh, hit the like button for me if you would. Let's get some folks in here. What's going on, Brevard? Sit for a little bit. Forgot tonight is the cat's eye. We're going to hold these for a little while because this is... Let's talk about these, though. Cat's eye. This is 27-year Canadian whiskey at 155.4 proof. This one is 157.04 proof. This one is finished in... Maple syrup barrels and is 157 proof. Those are some high proofs. So these, like folks in the Discord have been asking for these. They oh, want really? these super high proof Canadian whiskeys. And uh, it's just like drinking jet fuel. So we'll see. We'll see. We're going to try. I've never tried these. I've never had 27 year old Canadian whiskey. I've never had anything from Cat's Eye. Where or Obtanium, I think is the label that would be on these. Where is this? In Canada? Y'all let me know where cats are. I don't think... No, they're not in Canada. They're not in Canada. No. It's just Canadian. Martin with the $5 Canadian Super Chat. Five fifty. our Canadian whiskey is anything goes. Best of luck. <laughs> well, we're going to find out here in uh, just a second um, what that looks like. Ah, the leaderboard's broken already. It doesn't do well with Canadian stuff, so <laughs> we'll uh, we'll see if we can source. turn that off. Yeah, source from source from it is source from Canada. Okay, and I'm not sure where where Cat's Eye is. Y'all let me Iowa. That's right, Iowa. Iowa. Did I get in trouble at Talladega, Jill? Um. But Jill has not seen all the footage, so. Not that I know of, he didn't get. In I trouble. didn't. I didn't. Didn't get arrested. I made it home just fine. Everything was wonderful. He seems to have survived it, um, but you never know. Who knows what could come up months later? You never. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? You know, arrests are easy to cover up as yeah. long as you got a couple of days until the trial date comes up, right? Ron Martin with the dollar ninety nine super chat. I appreciate the support, Ron. All right, so let's go through these bottles before we get i don't want to like i'm liable to be a little slurry after drinking these 150 something proof ones so we're gonna we're gonna slow play those and let's talk about the five bottles that um that i can't live without we're gonna set these guys off to the side here so the five bottles i can't live without i tried to i tried to pick a little bit of a theme right to think about um because you just, is it just the five best bottles i own not really like, if you're going to build a bar at home, I'm trying to have a few different things. And one thing I'm trying to have is that special occasion, like, fantastic, over-the-top, really, really good bottle. And I think most folks who watch this channel, this is not going to be a surprise. Like, what is that bottle that's, like, super pricey, barely break it out, but, oh, my God, is it one of the best things you've ever had in your entire life? Go ahead and guess in the, in the chat there. I'll give you a second. But if you get this one wrong, you just haven't been watching that long. <laughs> and I can go ahead and guess what Jill's is. Of course, I'm going to go with the old Willie, the Billy LaRue here. We're on first name basis. That's how that's how me and Billy roll right here. <laughs> Jill, on the other hand, you I mean, so say you can't pick that one. If I couldn't, you pick can't that pick one. that one. What's what's that special bottle? Conservative Cow with the four ninety nine super chat. Love your channel as someone from the UK and part Scottish. Why do you dislike Scotch? Um, I am not sophisticated and do not have a refined palate. <laughs> uh, it's just the it's the maltiness of the whiskey. So you, they use a lot of malt in, in their um, in their whiskey. So Irish, Scottish, uh, Scotch um, all use a lot of malt, and I just just don't like that flavor profile. So it's mm -hmm. no hate. I want to find some I like. It's not nothing to do with the country, the region. It's just how they make their whiskey does not fit well with, with my palate. 
What are you thinking, Jill? Oh, I was just watching everybody guess my 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 pick. If yeah. I could, are they right? Yes, Coy Hill. Yes, Coy Hill. Absolutely. Coy Hill. 100%. Um, all right, so number yeah, it should be right over there if you want to grab it or you can leave it over there. Um, that's a pretty good one, Broom, too. That's a pretty good one there, too. Yeah, Obviously, that's, I love Frey Ranch. That, that, I'm sure that bottle will probably make the list. Maybe not the barrel proof. Don't Let's not bring up the barrel proof because I left it in Kentucky. Still remind gone. Me, remind me when I'm up there to get it. I yep. need to pick it up. It's still gone. All right, so the next one, let's just get the obvious ones out of the way. We'll start with the obvious ones, and we'll work our way Wait, down. Let me grab the coin. Kenneth Robertson with the $2 Super that. Chat. Love the channel. Thank you, Kenneth. Appreciate the support. Oh. What's MSRP on William LaRue? I think I paid about $110 or $120 for that bottle of whiskey right there. So it's somewhere around there, $100-ish. May have gone up since then. I've had this one a couple of years. All right, so next is if I just want a nice pour, and I'm going to come down here by myself and have just a really good sipper. Um, I want it to be next level. I'm drinking it neat. Um, I don't, you know, it's, it's one of those where it's not super expensive, so I don't have to worry about, can I get another one? Because I probably can. And, and that's going to be, um, you know, just, I, I, I mean, I don't want to just be a simp for Weller stuff, but that's just where we're at in life. Um, this is where I think Jill would probably, what are you yeah, thinking there, Jill? We're going to veer off on that one. I, yeah. I don't know. I'm not a big 107 I mean, not, it's not that I don't like I know, I know. You it. don't have good taste buds. It's fine. No, I have great taste buds. They're better than mine. I know. I mine. would say for me, it was Frey Ranch until you took it away. Well, you're talking about the barrel strength or like the normal Frey Ranch? Yeah, stuff. normal Frey Ranch. That's the probably. normal Frey Ranch we've got. Or, or what I have been sipping on recently that I just told you that I forgot how good it was is this. Okay, that nobody's going to be able to get that one, though. Nobody's going to be able to get that one, but you're right. That's a fantastic bottle. We did really re – the yeah. crew that went with us on that pick did a fantastic bottle. Excellent. Um, but there's a lot I of – I just tried it again the other day, and I was like, oh, my gosh. There's quite a few barrel blends like that that, that are really good. The Total Wine one over there is really good. So a lot of these really, really, barrel really good. craft spirit picks are, are exceptional. Like it's, it, yeah, like really good. Uh, the next bottle is I just want to come down and have a cheap pour. I, I may mix it. I may not mix it. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm drinking for a little bit of effect. I don't want anything that's going to be expensive or hard to get. I just want a really good pour. And I could share it with 10 people. I could drink it by myself. Like, it's just kind of a utility that serves all purposes. And that is my Turkey 101. I could put that in an old-fashioned. I could drink that neat. Like, and we could mix it all night long, not have a problem. If a bunch of people come over and we polish two bottles of it nobody cares nobody's upset about it what are your thoughts on that jill i don't really know because i don't really but it, it so for you it's probably that bottle's probably going to be jack daniels Pro yeah definitely mixing it yeah. jack and coke yeah that's that's just the we're just gonna we're gonna sit around a fire and have a drink it's probably going to be a jack, jack and coke and for coke, you yeah, yeah. uh but we're out of jack because that's exactly what we did with it <laughs> last weekend Norris Jones with the dollar ninety nine super chat thoughts on rye basil Hayden dark rye is my go to. Mm. I'm starting to find a lot of ryes that I like, but they're all kind of bourbon friendly ryes, um, and so I really like the Mictors rye. Uh, Sagamore makes a really nice rye. Um, the Free Ranch rye is pretty good. Uh, if you get a chance to get a K Luke rye, we've been enjoying that one a lot here lately. So I'm, I'm getting into rye. I haven't had the basil Hayden dark rye though. Pasta with the dollar, is that a super, I guess that's a super chat. Uh, dollar super chat, appreciate the support. Any honorable mentions? Yeah, we're going to have some honorable mentions here for sure, uh, Jameson. So in, in these categories, like let's talk about talk about each of these categories. If we're talking about honorable mention here on the, I would really love to keep one of these on the bar at all times. Um, this William, that that um, Coy Hill, the Willet Purple Tops are ones that I would like, I, I want to continue to find older and older Willet Purple Tops because every one I have is just fantastic. Um, I enjoy the old Fitzes, but honestly, they're not ones where I'm like, oh, I just really am craving the flavors of that bottle. Um, trying to see if there's anything else back here um, that's like, oh my God, I've got to keep that on the bar at all times. 
that, you know, the, the um, George T. Stag is one that I would put in that category. Um, the Pappy 15 is good, but honestly, I'd just rather have this one if I had to pick one. So that that's probably my choice. You disagree with any of those? It's like a special bottle we would really like to keep on the bar at all times. Mm -hmm. And then the coming down here and having a nice special pour. Some of the store picks we've had, like Frey Ranch, would fit into that. The Barrel Strength Frey Ranch. Oh, I do like the... Um... The, um, will it? The, well, that's what I put in this one. Oh, you put that the, one, okay. The weeded purple top fits into that one yeah. as well. Um, also here, um, I don't I don't know. The birthday bourbon stuff I really like, but I just don't think the flavors are strong enough for me to put it in this, like, always got to have it category. Um, but, yeah, this, this one, this, it's usually a store pick for me on that one. There's not a bottle where I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to drink it because I'm going to drink it. Um, Chris Saylor with the $1.99 Super Chat. What's your take on the Crown Golden Apple? I've had Crown Apple. I don't know about Golden Apple. Is that different than normal Crown Apple? Let me know. Uh, and then, so here, this is just, again, Wild Turkey 101, Jack Daniels, um, Evan Williams bottled in bond. We might go through a good bit. Um... Some Old Forester stuff that you can get on shelf, like a 1920, a 1910 if you can get it. Even the 100 proof Old Foresters are really, really good here because I, I can just go get them. Like, they're not they're not going to really stress me out if I drink all of it, right? If we drink all of this, it had better been a special night. If I drink all of this, I'm going to be a little, you know, a little anxiety ridden until I find another bottle. This guy, let's drink it because it's at every store everywhere. What is it? Somebody's talking about the golden apple oh 25 year old crown apple i have not had that but i need it so, uh, 23, 23 years 20, old 20, okay somewhere in the 20s haven't had it L would love to try it somebody gave me a sample of the it's like a crown xr in like a red bag and a there's one in a red bag and there's one in a blue bag um the red bag was really good but that's the only like super limited crown i've ever had so i need to try more of them uh, the next bottle is the bottle I'm going to bring out for company. And it's it's for somebody who's kind of into bourbon. You know, they know a little bit about bourbon. They've tried um, several different bourbons. And they're trying to maybe expand their, their portfolio there a little bit. And, and it's a bottle that usually gets those folks excited. That's normally why I'll always try to keep a bottle of this. It's because... you. It's just amazing how many people get super excited for this bottle because they've heard of it. Maybe they haven't had an opportunity to try it. And if they have, they're really excited to be able to give it a shot here. And that is good old fashioned horsey right here. Blanton's. Obi with the $4.99 super chat. Doc has a second batch of black steel bourbon releasing tomorrow. Um, I may try. I don't know. Like I talked to them when the first batch released, they reached out and was going to send us one. Um, I need Will to reach out to them, see if they'll send us batch two. I'd love to give it a try. Um, a lot of folks did not like bat, didn't like batch one, right? They're just like, um, this is just um, Castle and Key, and it's not good. I thought it was pretty decent. I mean, I didn't think it was like the greatest thing ever, but I, I didn't find anything unpleasant about it. So, you know, is that them being too picky, or is that be me being too simple? I, I don't know, but... I'd love to try the second one and see if they've improved it. Love to blind it versus the first one. Um, so this is the, the bottle I keep for just, you know, guests that come over. Because they're always excited about it. Even if they don't know what it is. You set that bottle down, you tell them the story, you talk about the horses and the bottle shape and the first mass marketed single barrel and everybody gets excited about that guy. So I, I always keep some Blantons around um, for that. Is there any bottle other than Blanton's that you really like to keep around and share? Mm, I can't think You know what one your friends tend to like the most? Which one? Weller Special Reserve. Oh. I, most of our Weller Special Reserve gets drank by, I mean, our friends, but like, you yeah. know, folks that, that come over and, yeah. you know, just that's what they want. That you, They that try the, that special, it's the green label the green Weller. One. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. EHT small batch. That's an honorable mention there. Um, honestly, the EHT could be honorable mention here for like a really good pour that I try to take it easy on because it's fantastic. I, I would say probably the single barrel here 
for that bottle that I'll drink and I, I'll go through several bottles a year, but I try to take it easy on because they're not super easy to get. And the small batch here, yeah, if somebody's kind of into bourbon, uh, if they've had Blanton's and they like Blanton's, I'll probably give them the E.H. Taylor to kind of take it up a notch or, or at least give them an, an alternative um, to what's in this bottle. And what is it? Have we had win, uh, Jack Daniels winter Jack Cider? I have not had that, no. Have sounds it. good. It sounds good in the winter. It sounds warm right now. <laughs> uh, fifth, but not least, is a bottle where if somebody comes over and they're not, and I'm just trying to get them into bourbon. I'm trying to get them to explore things. Maybe they don't know a whole lot about bourbon. We're going to try several different ones. This is one I'm going to put in that lineup um, to really try to get them excited about what bourbon can do. And that is the Four Roses single barrel. So if I wanna, if I'm gonna build a bar at home, this is what I'm going to have, right? I'm gonna have my everyday, like just go-to sipper. I'm gonna have something that most people are gonna think is nice. I'm gonna have something that's nice, that's that's attainable for a lot of people um, that maybe, maybe, you know, beginners haven't tried so much, but it's still really tasty. I'm gonna have my, I want a nice pour, something a little bit elevated. And then I'm going to have that really, really special bottle that we've got to take years to drink because we'll probably never see another one of them. How many years have we had that now? This one is a 2020. So we've had this about three years, technically not three years yet, about two and a half because we got it in November of 2020. I'd say it's about halfway gone, right? Yeah, probably a little less than that, but yeah. it's one of those where once you get down a little more, once we consume a little more of this bottle, within the next year, we're probably just going to have to go ahead and polish it off because once it gets so low, it starts to oxidize a little uh. bit. Um, so like this bottle really needs to be drank, but honestly, we've been, we've been drinking. That one's not that old. We've been drinking on this one regular, so it'll get drank here pretty soon. This Blanton's probably needs to go ahead and get drank that low. What about this? Uh, that one's fine. It's it's about half, and I share that one a lot when people come over. Yeah, it was um, so, so it'll it'll get drank. I mean, we've only had that one for four or five months. We've been gone those four or five months, and half of it still got drank. So, ah, uh, Buffalo Trace makes great bourbon. Yeah, I mean there there is there are three Buffalo Traces up here. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, try not to be a simp for the Weller or the Buffalo Trace stuff, but it's good. So, I need a pour, though. Which one of these am I going to drink here, Jill? I need something to warm my palate up before we hit these Canadian whiskeys. Um, ooh, I've got a bottle I want you to try. You have a Jill's probably only going to be with us for the first hour. We're about 30 minutes in. I've got a bottle I want you to try without knowing what it is. Okay. So, let's put these up. And then I'm going to need you to leave the room for a minute because I've got something that I don't think Jill's ever had okay. that I want to see her blind thoughts on it. My blind thoughts yes, on it. Yes, slide those over there. Slide those. Get those on out of the way over here. Okay. Hand me a Glen Cairn before you leave, please. Alex Davis with the $5 Super Chat. How are you able to keep Weller 107 on your shelf while in Alabama? Uh, so in Alabama, it used to drop just about every month in the state, um, and it slowed down. Like it, that, Now it's probably in the quarterly lottery every month or every quarter, um, so it's a little harder to get, but that's kind of a new thing this year, uh, and that I travel a lot. So I travel sometimes. I saw it like I just saw it in Kentucky when I was up there, and I paid the maximum I will pay for a Weller Antique 107, but I bought two of them at that price. So... <laughs> That helped. Um, so it's it's luck, and then I've got really good friends. If I run out, I'll just beg for one. All, All right. right. So you want me to leave? I want you to leave. All right. What are you looking at? You looking, looking for? At... You're trying to figure out which bottle moves? No. Are you trying my trick? My mind tricks here? No. She's trying my mind tricks no. here. I'm gonna go to your office. Okay, go to my office. I'm trying to figure out how to become a patron. They're dropping links here every few minutes, typically. Um, on joining the patrons. So I'll tell y'all about this bottle here in a minute. I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to give Jill any clues, but um, I'm going to pour a bunch of this because I'm going to drink it afterwards.
So I'll tell y'all about this in a minute. Come here, Jill. All right, Jill, I'm done. Anything under 300 is fair for Knob Creek 18 at this point. That's probably around what I paid for the one I got. And I wasn't, like, I wasn't enthusiastic about that price. Um, that's like the third or fourth amount of money, most amount of money I've ever paid for a bottle of whiskey. And it's not the third or fourth best bottle I've ever had. It's, it's a good whiskey, don't get me wrong. But, like, for that kind of money, the problem is, is nothing in that price range do I ever find exceptional. Nothing. Either it's going to cost me thousands of dollars and I think it's exceptional, or it's going to cost me like 80 bucks and I find it's exceptional. Like, it's just a weird range. You poured a lot. I'm going to drink the rest of it. Oh. Don't worry. Don't worry. Right. Woo. Uh, a hundred dollars is the most I try to buy antique 107 for. But if I was completely out, I'd probably pull the trigger on that, um, Chris. But that, I just a hundred is my number, and I'd love to get it less than that in Alabama. I can get it less than that when I can get it. Eighty five plus shipping and handling. Well, there you go. Might might have to. I'm going. I'm going to Ohio. So a week from Sunday. Actually, a week from last yesterday, like this coming Sunday. Today's yes. Monday. This coming Sunday, I am flying to Dayton and picking up Maggie, Maggie, who's in Dayton, driving over to Louisville. So I may do some bourbon hunting next Sunday in Dayton, and I'm hoping I can find some Weller. We'll see. Jameson's not really my jam. What do you think here, Jill? Give me it your thoughts. It smells good. Okay. Smells That's good. good. Smells good. It's good. Good smell. Get some caramel. Big right. J-Rock got a 107 today. Nice. Ooh. In Nashville? I'm assuming. All right. Yeah, $40 for an Eagle Rare is definitely a buy. You're very quiet. That's pleasant. It's pleasant. That is How pleasant. pleasant is it? How pleasant is it? I would say it's not very high proof. Okay. Like, what proof do you think that is? Yeah, Devin, I'll jump over there for a little bit. I do have to pack because I'm leaving tomorrow again. Um, so I'll jump on the voice chat. So we're going to have a voice chat over in Discord for supporters. 100 to 105, somewhere around there. You have nailed that. Look at me. You have nailed the proof. Which one was it, 100 or 100? It's exactly 100. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I tried some TX. I thought it was all right. I didn't nothing I loved about it, but you know, Texas whiskey's a thing. What do you pick up on the flavors? What are you thinking? There's something odd about it. Okay. I'm not quite sure what. I mean, it's pleasant, but there's just something odd on the finish. Something odd on the finish. A twangy. There's a twang. There's some sort of something. Okay. That is not. Yeah, I was really thinking about it. Um, yeah. You were thinking about what? Oh, this? Yes. yes. Yeah. She's nervous. I take my time. She's nervous. I'm not nervous. Yeah. I hey, I got that proof. I'm gonna have to down. dance. I'm gonna have to dance or something while she's doing this. I Keep got Keep everybody proof entertained. Down. You nailed the proof. I nailed you the nailed proof. the proof. And honestly, you nailed the the not. It's not a finished whiskey. It's not a. Finished. It is not a finished whiskey. Well, that's maybe what I was thinking. That that the weirdness. It in, is not. Okay. Oh, I, mean, I don't like one seven five liters either. Police. I, I, you know, I'll get them if I have to. The only ones I have is like I think a Barton because that's the only one I could get, and then a um, the Weller Special Reserve because the 750s get drank so fast. So I, I buy those when I see them. But I th think it's pleasant. Okay. But I'm not liking the finish. All right. And like the way it goes down, like I don't. There's something. That's not something I would continue to drink neat in a Glencairn just for okay. the fun of it. Well, this is the bottle they sent me. 
Um, this one was sent to me by, because we, we tried the um, Ben Holiday, mm -hmm. and I really liked the Ben Holiday. So they sent us, this is the Ben Holiday we tried right here. And they sent a letter to Will, to Will, not to me. They sent a letter to Will. Why did they send a letter to Will? I don't know why they sent a letter to Will. Maybe they thought my name was Will. Maybe Will had reached out to, I don't know, but a letter came in to Will. So I guess technically we're drinking Will's bottle yep. here. Um, I'm probably going to claim it. But this is the holiday soft red wheat. So what you're tasting is probably that red wheat and what it does. And a lot of people will pick up like a funkiness to wheat, like a, just an, a little bit of an odd flavor, which makes people not like wheaters sometimes. For me, I don't get any oddity with wheat. Mm. I like wheat. I like the I like Weller stuff. I like, you know, the Pappies. I like the well, Larceny, especially the high proofs. Of course. But that's probably what you're picking up on this. I get a little bit of oakiness on the finish and a little bit of kind of a, I don't know, kind of Just a floral something. wheat. I don't know. I didn't get no floral. But I like that bottle a lot. Like, I like, that's a that's a really good bottle of whiskey to me. Really nice oaky weeder. So you get some, now with weeders sometimes, up front you don't get any of the spiciness um, I don't oftentimes get as much caramel on, on the uh, front of the palate. And so it's softer on the front of the palate. So I can pick up a lot more kind of floral, fruity notes, typically. Not always. Like, larceny hits me a little different. But it's much softer up front. But that also makes the mid and the finish feel much more intense because it hits you so the, subtle. That's where I got yeah. the weirdness. And I can see where you could get that, but I like it. I like that bottle. So y'all, let me know if you've uh, if you've had this soft red wheat from Ben Holiday. But I really like the two Holiday bottles. I don't know if I like it better than this one though. Mm. I don't know. I mean, we're gonna put it in a pappy glass right here and see how that comes out. Yeah. Might might play in its favor. Might actually. <laughs> Will is too generous. J Rock oh says. yes, he is. Ah, uh, Chris with the dollar ninety nine super chat. Uh, honest take on Weller Special Reserve. I like it. It's a good whiskey. It's not top tier. It's not exceptional. It's a fan. It's probably the best thing I've ever had mixed with Coke. Hands down. Like we that um, John Hargett was drinking my Weller Special Reserve and Coke, and I was like. When in Rome, I guess. So I started mixing it with Coke on vacation. And I was like, this is delicious. <laughs> okay. um, so I don't do it here typically because it's just hard to get. But on vacation, that's what we did with a whole bunch of those $20 bottles I bought in Arkansas. A couple of them got mixed with Coke. Um, so it was fantastic. Uh, so it's a great, great mixer. Neat in a Glen, not, not wonderful. This holiday is a weeder. This one is not. I do not believe. It doesn't say anything about it. Missouri straight bourbon whiskey and some stuff I can't read because it's really small and my eyes are gone. Mm -hmm. Weller Foolproof is solid. Now, I like the 107 better, but it's like this much. Just th this much. Watching from Australia. Have you tried any of our Tasmanian whiskey? I have not. We, no. need, to go, we need to go there and try that, don't we? Uh, yeah. Of course we do. If you'd quit planning beach trips... You just went to the beach. I didn't you're go to the beach. Oh, yeah, I did. You're about to go to the beach. And today I started getting notifications for another beach trip that you're planning no, for something. No, that, that was not mine. I was I was helping Coco out mm -hmm. to get her a place. <laughs> I was just, I'm, I'm the deal getter. So everybody wants me to, you know, try to get the best deal on a, on a thing. So that, that was not me. Thank you. Got to cut back the beach trips. We go to, go to Australia. Honestly, tonight, that's that's tough. Both of these are really nice pours. I'm going to have to blind those at some point. Mm. But tonight, I'm digging the wheat. Really? Like, I'm digging the wheat. That's good. That's a good bottle. Will's never getting this one. Sorry, Will. <laughs> you should have showed up to the live stream instead of watching the Celtics play. Somebody give me an update on how that game's going. All right, Jill, get me uh, three Glens. 
three different ones if possible. I'll be going to Kentucky in two weeks. Anywhere I should check out every distillery you can get to is, is the best bet. Is mellow corn worth the try? Mellow corn's fine, man. Nothing wrong with mellow corn at all, Michael. Um, it's just, like, it's just corn whiskey, right? So it's, apparently I've got spoons sitting on You've top of the glen. you got a maze over here. It's hard um, to... So, but no, mellow corn's a good, solid corn whiskey. Like, it's nothing, like, super robust or, um, you know, you're not going to get a ton of, like, complexity out of it. But it's not a bad pour. Matt with the four ninety nine dollars Super Chat. Watching from Missouri. Love seeing your videos and seeing you visit the area looking for bourbons. Most people forget about this space of Missouri. I'm going to hit up Holiday. We're going to do something with them. I really want to see if we can do a pick. Um, I'd love to try to find something really, really special. A special barrel they've got on this uh, weeded one right here. Because that's, that's crazy good to me. Jill wasn't as big of a fan as I am. But I think it'll grow on her. Bob with the 199 super chat. Aww. Make sure there's no instructions here. Just join the patron Welcome. from MO's Missouri. Isn't Missouri, it? yes. It's not Montana. Montana's MT, isn't it? I, I, I'm not the postmaster. I don't remember. It's been a while since I've had to deal with state abbreviations. Uh-huh. Uh, Cat's Eye Distillery. So Cat's Eye Distillery, a lot of folks in the chat wanted me to try to get a barrel of obtainium. 27-year-old Canadian whiskey. And it just so happens that Gene from uh, Cat's Eye Distillery reached out last week, week before last, and said, hey, uh, you're interested in a barrel. Here's what I've got. And I'm like, well, I don't know if I am, but the Discord is, so I'm willing to sacrifice for y'all. This one's for the Discord. Um, this is 150-something proof, Jill, so you might want to be. I want you to try, try, the, try at least one of these. And then I'll pick one of the other ones that's the best if you want to try one of those. I want to try the maple syrup mm -hmm. one. That's that one. And then these two are the same. They're just slightly different proofs. Man, why so high proof? Well, it's Canadian. Um, apparently, they don't do anything halfway. All right. So, I don't think Canadian whiskey has... I mean, not that I don't... I mean, I like high proof stuff, but... Somebody in the chat correct me if I'm wrong. But I just don't think there's any rules to Canadian whiskey. It just has to be made in Canada. And so they can oh. distill it super high proof. It's kind of like light whiskey in America. Like you could just do all sorts of things. With oh. bourbon, like there's there's limits to how right. high you can distill it and then limits to how high it can go into the barrel. These rules. Um, and then Canadians are just like, hey, like y'all just, I'm, thank God y'all are making whiskey. You know, just <laughs> make it. Do whatever you want to do. Just make some whiskey. The flavor is in the proof, J-Rock yeah. says. Yeah. Prison uh, rules of whiskey. <laughs> Bowman single barrel. I like the Bowman stuff, but honestly, the Bowman stuff's probably some of my least favorite um, Buffalo Trace products. Like, I think they're good. I just don't love... I think they run them through a pot still or something up there once they get them up there. And I think it takes a lot of the sweetness out and adds a little bit of flavor that it's just not as good to me. So, like, a, that would not be as good to me as an E.H. Taylor or Blanton's or something like that. Devin with Devin. the $20 Super Chat. Been excited for this. Well, you're just going to have to wait a little while longer because I suck at opening things. <laughs> and this Canadian or Iowa plastic or wherever this comes from is um, really strong. <laughs> really strong. It's really strong. Just like the proof, the plastic is strong. All right. So we're going to just stick these like this so I remember yeah. what they are. So we got to pick We got to pick zero, one, or all of these. Like I'm sure I can just say, hey, man, I want all three barrels. The problem here is I don't have a price on these. I expect these bottles, oh. because they're 27 years old, so would be fairly like expensive. Doing a live barrel pick? We could. Is that what we're doing? We here? could. Now I may I may save some samples and send it to some other folks, but yeah. we got to make a decision here pretty quick if we're going to do it, because dude's not going to hold barrels forever. Okay. So I'm trying to just pour us a little bit here. Knife Man with the $5 Super Chat just picked up a Buffalo Trace and Elijah Craig Small Batch. Can't decide which to sip on tonight. Buffalo Trace, crack it open. Go for it. Someone asked, is that his sister? Me? Yes, Am I is, his sister? Yes. Mm -hmm. This is Alabama. She's my wife and my sister. You know? Small county, man. Got to do what you got to do. <laughs> no. Roll Tide. I'm not his sister. <laughs> we used to look alike when I wasn't fat. Oh, gosh. It's true. So used crazy. to get that a lot. 
You're crazy. Okay, you're going to go with the maple finish yeah. real quick. Okay. That's my daughter. Yeah, that's his daughter. That's even weirder, Squirrel. That's weird. Even oh in Alabama, you gosh. can't get away with that, okay? Ooh, that smells good. It smells good? Save me a little. I don't know if it's the maple syrup or what, but... Yeah, I think these are these are obtainium. So it's Cat's Eye Distillery, 27-year-old uh, Canadian whiskey. Jill is trying one that is 27-year-old Canadian whiskey finished in a maple, maple syrup, syrup barrel, barrel, 157 oh. proof. Well, that's um, a very good smell. It does have a little bit of a... I'm never going to get... It's going to evaporate from the glass before Shut I get up. to try it. We have different styles here, We have okay? very different styles, which means I should go first. Very different styles. You Wait, can start on one of those other I, ones. But then I want to try that one. Is she even 21? Barely. Barely. <laughs> barely. Yes. Barely. All right. Ooh, man. That's, um, that's different. I bet it's going to be better in that maple syrup barrel, though. <laughs> Ma'am. <laughs> I wonder if this will start my line more. Um, it's getting in that proof range. Whew. What do you think? It's an experience, huh? Appreciate it, Joe. So, for me, I don't know about for y'all, but for me, this high of proof is a, is a whole body experience. Yep. Like, your body just kind of reacts to it, and your, your stomach is just like, what did you just do? And then you just start your head starts kind of pounding and you're like, ah, that's probably poison. I probably should stop. And then you just keep drinking it. Eventually, maybe you get used to it. I don't know. But Coy Hill was kind of like that the first time I had it. I like that. You like this one? Yeah. Okay. But you definitely, you're left with the maple syrup in your mouth. Ooh, that's, it's high proof. Ooh. It's not the proof. Like, I'm trying to decide if I like those flavors. Right? I'm trying to decide if I like those flavors. There, there are flavors. They are very intense flavors. I'm trying very much to decide whether or not I like those flavors. Because they're not flavors I'm typically looking for in a whiskey. They are intense. They are, they are intense. It almost evaporates. They're a whole campground of tents. <laughs> it that's, how many, like, that's how many tents these things are in. It almost evaporates in your mouth as soon as it... That's because it's rubbing alcohol. No. It's barrel finished rub. It doesn't taste like rubbing no. alcohol, but it's almost high enough proof to be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's, you're saying I got yeah. nothing to say about it. I got it. nothing to say about that because it definitely evaporates in your mouth. I don't know if I can try the other ones. Whew. struggling like I just so here, here's my struggle y'all y'all help me out with this y'all help me out I, seriously I'm gonna I'm gonna take your words to heart here rubbing alcohol is 140 so yeah it's um it's it's over yeah <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna take y'all's word to heart here these are not things I would ever drink they're not bad they're not bad things they're they're fine things they're just things that I would never drink. So, but y'all, some of y'all tend to like these things. And so I know that my palate is not the same as everybody's and my preference is not for everybody. And I, the whole point of this channel, like if y'all have watched the videos, the whole point of this channel is that you shouldn't base what you drink on somebody else's opinion, right? I try to share mine to get people started, but let's just have a good time. Let's drink some whiskey. So I don't think that I am some sort of authority on whiskey that other folks should be drinking. And, and there are some folks in this space that, that do believe that. Believe me, they, they're, most of them are in my comments. But I also don't want to, like, we have an opportunity. Like, y'all have given us a bit of a platform here to help y'all obtain stuff that you would really enjoy. And so I want to... I want to help you obtain things that you would enjoy. And if you like stuff like this, then we'll we'll try to make that happen. But at the same time, it concerns me because if it's good, like I think there's a, a general saying, and I forget the exact saying, I think it comes from the wine industry. 
And it basically goes like, make sure you like the product that you're making because you may end up drinking it all. Mm. In other words, if you can't sell it, you're going to be stuck with it, right? And so if I bought, these are going to be a hundred and something dollars. I, I think these go for like $150 or so. So very expensive bottles. Don't know what the yield is on something like this, but it concerns me because if, if it's something like if, if they give me a good store pick on this, I, I'll sell it because I'm excited about it and other people will be excited about it and we'll get it out. But uh, on the other hand, something like this that's interesting, like there's all sorts of interesting things going on here. But like, and I will, I will probably go through a bottle or two here, just sharing it with people that are dumb enough to try it. You know, people are like, "I love proof." Okay, take yeah. a big old swig of that. What? So I, like, I don't know. I'm just kind of, I'm a little stuck here. So I'm going to take these samples here, and I'm going to divvy them out to some folks that have requested these, and then y'all will let me know if this is something we should try to um, obtain. It's obtaining. That's a that's, that's punny. So. <laughs> I mean, I think this one's really good. It's just really hot. I don't think I could. What's the cool? Yeah, add the a bit of water. I mean, it's a good point. That will soften them up, but. Right, 142. So these are way higher than even Koi Heel. Oh, right? yeah. A little too much water in that one. So I just don't. I I don't. I know. I'm definitely gonna. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna send one of these to Nate for sure. I could never drink a pour of that. <laughs> Deep thoughts. Deep thoughts with Jack Handy. And not because it's not good. It's just that. Whew. I mean, it's better. Still not flavors I'm looking for. Is that the maple syrup one? No. I'm not gonna try anything else. Okay. Whew. That's the maple syrup one. Yeah. One hundred and sixty-five bottles on the last door pick. Yeah, and these are these are one hundred and fifty something proof. So yeah, we could have them watered down, but nobody wants that. You don't want to water down a hazmat. People want the hazmat. They want the one hundred and fifty something proof. And so with a little water, that's inter there's some interesting things going on there. I just still would not keep going back to that. The de definitely the water, yeah, and that's pretty darn good. I like that one. Okay. I think that's the most interesting I one like for that sure. I like that a lot. And that Cause is I, not I, rubbing alcohol in my mouth. It's not like evaporating now. Well, I think the maple syrup finish I like blends that really one. well with the flavors. Like, I get those same flavors on this one, but the maple syrup like gives that. it a little more of balance, a little more well-rounded. I could be behind so, that and maybe over some ice. and. Okay. Yeah. That one's good. Well, I'm going to need to get these out. Like, I may... Oof, I guess I'll have to send him out next week. I don't know how long he's going to hold the barrels for us. But if he doesn't hold these barrels, at least we'll know what we're dealing with on these. Um, because I'm gone till Saturday. I'm back here Saturday. Then, then you're Sunday gone I fly again. again. So, gone, gone, um, gone. So, yeah, for those oh, that are just, yeah. just getting in <laughs> here, we are trying 150 plus proof 27 year old Canadian whiskey. And believe me, these, like, 27 year old Canadian whiskey has almost no oakiness on it. Like, y'all see how light those are. Um, 27 yeah, years old. Get... So, um, things don't age that well in Canada. Hey, eh? <laughs> Hot pancake syrup. Smokey just rolled oh, it in what here. what is that stuff that we tried? We got in the mail, and it was some sort of maple syrup situation. Oh, that's Taconic. Oh, my That is Taconic. Goodness. Yeah, that's in the fridge. That was so, the best. Well, I, I have their whiskey, too. I didn't... I didn't love the maple finished whiskey, but the maple syrup that they sent. So they they took a bourbon barrel and they aged maple syrup in it, and then they poured that out, bottled that, and then they took their whiskey and put it in the barrel that had held the maple syrup. I didn't love the maple syrup finished whiskey, although I do like their whiskey. Like their normal normal whiskey is pretty good. I may try those in the second hour, but the syrup. Oh my was some goodness. of the best things. Some of the best stuff I've ever had in my it entire was life. So good. Like I just like that's just like pour that over ice cream. That's how good that is. Please. So freaking good. Matter of fact, I need. We're gonna try some syrup. Entertain people. Dance for them, Jill. Dance I, for them. I am not dancing. I am not dancing. I'm sorry, guys. I, I'm not dancing for y'all. I don't know. I'll answer some questions. 
I don't see any. Uh <laughs> Talk to us, Jill. Yes. Uh, let's see. Knob Creek Maple? Question mark. I don't know. Do you like Knob Creek? I haven't had Knob Creek Maple. So maple finished whiskey is not <laughs> not my jam. Although honestly, you would think if, if any maple finished anything, that this would be the best in the world because this is some of the best syrup I've oh, ever it's had. So good. We're oh, just gonna man. pour it in a Glen Cairn. That's what we're gonna do. That's that's the world we're living in right now. We're having maple syrup out of a Glen Cairn. You want to lick the bottle? <laughs> no, thank you. Mm. You have to keep it in the fridge, right? That's what it said. Yes. Well, I mean, it's maple syrup. I think it'll probably be okay. Uh, it but... says refrigerate after opening. Yeah, Natty. Swear Jar sent us a sample. We did a we did a promo video for them. They didn't like my humor too much. Um, they had us cut out just about all the jokes I made in that video. They ended up being like a short video, like 15 <laughs> seconds. Um, I, you know, Jill liked it. A lot better than I did. Sing some Taylor Swift, Bob says. <laughs> Favorite distillery on the trail. I mean, I love Buffalo Trace. That was a good tour, but I haven't been to all of them yet. I need to do that. That needs to be a video. Yeah, y'all don't want me to sing any Taylor Swift. Knob Creek Maple is syrup with a little... Oh, my God. It's that is so, so good. Like, that just tastes like ice cream. Yeah. Like, wow. Mm. Super Troopers. Ah, uh, appreciate it there, Dragon B. What are we doing today? We just finished going through the five bottles we can't live without. We just finished trying some 27-year-old, 155-plus proof Canadian whiskey, and now we're drinking maple syrup out of a glass. That is so good. A man does not get to my size without drinking maple syrup out of a glass at least once. <laughs> yeah, Big J-Rock, there you go, exactly. <laughs> Wilford Brimley has entered the chat. Diabetes. Uh, <laughs> thoughts on Angel's Envy. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of port-finished whiskey, but as far as port finishes go, I think Angel's Envy is really good. Um, I think I like the cash strength a little better than the regular, but still not not something I'm going to drink a whole bunch of. Appreciate it, Bob. Thanks for the support. Where is this is Taconic. Okay, so this is... Taconic, and that's T-A-C-O-N-I-C Distillery, uh, and they are out of New York, New York somewhere. Yeah. I don't know where in New York, but they are somewhere in New York State. Uh, and so we, we got it. They sent us a bunch of whiskey. We're looking for barrel picks. Like, I may do a tour of New York here pretty soon, September or so. Um, we may do a couple of barrel picks while I'm up there, and so we had some small distilleries send us samples. And this was in their sample kit and delicious. I mean, Lord Gosh. have mercy. That is that is just all sorts of goodness right there for sure. Highly recommend. If you come to Ben recommend. Holiday, um, yeah, I, like I said, we're going to hit them up. They sent us a letter. So now I got their contact info. You kept the letter, right? The letter is somewhere. I think it's down here somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to have to reply, even though they sent the letter to Will. <laughs> So they little, may not want to hear from I'm a little from, offended. Yeah, they, maybe. They may not want to hear from TJ. Will's or got Brazil. Will's got all the clout in the world. <laughs> Me on the other yeah. hand, Dutchess County, New York, Hudson Valley. Ah, oh, that's going to Oh, we got to go there. I love upstate New York. You think that's that's your jam? You like that in the fall? Yeah. Like it's oh, going to be in the yeah, fall, Jill. Yeah. It's going to be September probably. Yes. Appreciate it, Tim. Do a barrel pick of the maple syrup. Oh, yes. Honestly, that's like Eric. If we do a barrel pick from them, I may like include a bottle of this maple syrup with every bottle. Oh. Like we may just bump the like. I don't know how much a bottle of this maple syrup costs, but it can't be that expensive. It's maple syrup, I don't so know. we may just bump the price of the bottle up five bucks or so, and then everyone gets a maple syrup bottle to go along with it. That would be pretty fun. Uh, lunch on me at Ben Holiday. I mean, just make sure you're in the Discord because here's the problem. I get a lot of these. Hey, if you're in this place, hit me up. But I can't remember and I never can find the messages. I go search for When I go places, I search for the messages. I say, somebody said they were in this location and I can't find them because I don't remember. Did they hit me up on TikTok? Did they hit me up on Instagram, Facebook? Was it a comment on YouTube? Was it in a live stream? I don't know. So I, I never can remember. find them. Um, so make sure you're in the Discord, and if I have time, sometimes I go places I don't have time, but if I have a little time, I'll post in there, and then we'll uh, we'll try to figure out you know who's around and what we can do. 
Uh, lower proof Kings County. I have not. All I tried was the barrel strength. 20 bucks for maple syrup. Hmm. Well, that sucks a little. That may that may kill my plans. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe I get it cheaper if I buy a whole barrel. I don't I don't know. Mm, I don't know. That but that's good maple syrup. That is I mean they did age it in a barrel for a long time. That is delicious. Should go in syrup. March when they tap the maple trees. That, that's Ooh, actually pretty cool. Greg's smarter than I am. Yeah. Um, but I'm going when I'm already going to be up there probably for something else. So we're talking to. Um, Josh at Spillway is doing some things with Penelope, so we're trying to get in on that. Maybe do a Penelope pick while we're up there. Stoned with the 279 Canadian Super Chat. Can I get your barrel picks if I'm in Canada? Unfortunately, right now, we cannot ship them to Canada. I'm I'm talking to my guy about that. I'm trying to see if there's a way. We need to find like somebody that can mule them in, like somebody that can ship them that maybe lives in the northern part of the u.s that might drive them across the border or you can get like a p.o box and like i don't i don't know but we can't ship them there mm -hmm. um so we got to figure figure that out should you get dragons like should you get like this maple syrup for your dad if he likes maple syrup absolutely absolutely <laughs> so dave is asking about the soft red wheat that's what this is right here my friend they just sent us this bottle of the holiday soft red wheat we were trying that earlier and that is a delicious bottle. I actually think I like that a little better than this one. And I really like this bottle. So I, I'm enjoying that one. It could be because it's new. Could be just a mood thing. I'm going to need to blind those at some point in the future. But this one was hitting me just right. Jill, on the other hand, didn't love it as much as I did. So there's that, you know. You got to figure out, is she right? Am I right? Are we both wrong? It, <laughs> it could be any combination of Are those. Are we both right? Yeah. Going to NASCAR at Watkins Glen. So based on the performance of the Talladega video, I'm not going to a NASCAR event ever again. Mm. I'm going to have to say that was not my favorite video. You didn't like it? What did you not like about it? I don't know. I guess just, I mean, no offense to anybody whose scene it is. It's just not my scene. I mean, it's a different scene. And I, I think maybe we could have packed, first of all, dropping it on a holiday weekend, probably not the smartest thing. Um, to, you know, did we did we do a good job of explaining it, or it, does it interest the audience? You know, it's a bourbon channel, and that we did a barrel pick, but it's very much not a bourbon video. Yeah, I don't know. It just wasn't my favorite. Know. We'll see if the Kentucky Derby does better because I've got that video coming here, not too distant future. If that one doesn't do very well, well I mean, why? Like, I I like the events. Don't get me wrong. The Atlanta Braves have reached out. We want to do something with them. Um, so those are great. I love those, but are those just shorts and we go there and we film a bunch of shorts while we're there doing stuff or, you know, maybe rethink the events because if we can do 150,000 views on me just going bourbon hunting in the middle of nowhere, well, I mean, that's a much more cost effective video than spending thousands of dollars going to the Kentucky Derby. Um, the Talladega was a cheap video because Clyde Mays paid for everything. Like I, I, I think I spent like 150 bucks, and most of that was gas and me I mean, buying a bunch of beer a, and stuff. You, I think you did a good job. It was a good video. It, I just I, it was a good video. Wasn't my favorite. But I don't think like, but people didn't watch it. So like, it's a good video. I think, but I there think was the a only disconnect. People didn't watch it was because it was the holiday weekend. Could be. And... Well, that means maybe it'll get views yeah. over time. I don't know. Yeah, um, I think it's fine. So it's all it's all good. So we'll keep doing, we've got some bourbon hunting videos. I know we got the Atlanta one coming out, don't we? We haven't released that one yet, did mm -mm. we? We released, oh yeah, it was the one we filmed a long time ago that released this week, like the Celebrity Whiskey. I, I filmed that like a couple of months oh. ago, it feels like. Um, so that, that Atlanta video should be coming up. We um, did some hunting in Louisville, that one's coming up. <laughs> and then we've got the, the Derby. What is it? Big J Rock said drop the unedited version in the Patreon. Dude, I deleted some footage. Let's put it that way. Like, I'm just like, this footage is no use to anybody. We just, um, yeah. And honestly, I, if we, like, we might just have to drop it on OnlyFans or something. I don't even know if it adheres to patrons terms of service. <laughs> um, ever picked hunted in Iowa? I have not. So I, I'm thinking about, I want to start a series. I want to start trying to bourbon hunt in every state. But, like, how long would it take us to bourbon hunt in every state? Like, if we did one a month, you're talking about, like, four-plus years. Oh, wow. So we would have to do two states a month to make that happen, and that is a lot of bourbon hunting. Two states a month? 
Yeah. That's a lot. It's a lot of bourbon hunting. But we could go, and then we could go to Scotland and Ireland and Australia and Canada and Mexico. Like, I don't care. Well, maybe not Mexico. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how the bourbon scene is in Mexico. Y'all let me know. Mm-hmm. Any luck in Atlanta? I bought a lot of bottles. I bought quite a few bottles in Atlanta. I got turned down. Experience. I tried to I tried to find a bourbon date. Um, I, I hope that guy doesn't get too much flack about that. It's going to be funny. I haven't seen the video. I don't know how much they've edited, but I went into the first liquor store, and there was a guy there doing exactly what I was doing. He dropped his family off at Taylor Swift. He was going to four or five liquor stores. I was like, we'll just go together. And he's like, nah. <laughs> he kept coming up with excuses. He wouldn't say nah. no. He's just like, ah. You know, I got this thing, and I was like, that's not a problem, man. We, I do that, too. And he's like, oh, I got this thing. I was like, that's fine. I got to eat, too. And he's like, oh, I got... And he finally just like, I'll just slow you down. I was like, okay, <laughs> that's cool. I'll just slow you down. Jill ain't messing with it. Definitely, that was definitely not Jill's scene. Although, 99% of what happened, Jill would have Jill would have loved everything except for Talladega Boulevard. Honestly, everything except for Talladega Boulevard, Jill would have been okay with. Pennsylvania bourbon hunting sucks, but that's a story, right? That's still cool. Like, there's going to be a lot of states that suck, but you do them, you have a good time with it, and uh, you see what comes of it. Let's see. What time is it, Jill? I think it's time for me. It is me 9 o'clock, Jill. To you go. bouncing? Yes. <sighs> Jill's bouncing on me here. I'm going to leave you for okay. the night. Well, I appreciate you at least joining me for an hour. Yes. I've not it's tried to be back. Now I'm leaving. Now you're leaving. Good to be back. Uh, so before, like, I'm going to stay on here for a yeah. little while, but I am trying to set up a stream next Monday. I'm going to be gone next Monday. I'm going to be in Louisville. Um, I'm going to be doing some barrel picks with Josh from Spillway. Um, so you're going to still stream? But he is he is working with the hotel we're staying at. They supposedly have a big, like, oh, bourbon cool. room. And I may stream with the manager of the hotel in their bourbon storage room. That is like supposedly this big glass room full of full of bottles. Cool. Now I don't know anything about internet. Like it may be last minute. It may be like, oh my god, I, I, this works. Yeah. But I've got to pack everything up and make sure we're good to go. Um, and it's going to be a very unsophisticated stream. Not that these are particularly <laughs> sophisticated, but um, we're just going to set up one camera, grab this microphone, and hopefully, if the internet's good enough, stream from the hotel next Monday. But. No promises because I'm going into a very unknown environment and hotels don't usually have good enough Wi-Fi for me to stream. Well, that'd be cool to see. That'd be fun. All right, Jill. All right. Good night, everybody. Get out of here. Get. 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 He's kicking me out. Oh, goodness. Oh, oh, goodness. See y'all next stream. Well, no, not next but Jill will see y'all in a couple of weeks. Couple of weeks. Probably. Maybe. Who knows? I'll, I'll be watching, though. I'll watch. Yeah, yeah. You'll be in, she'll be in the chat next week. Yeah. Bye. That was an extreme Great. Jill close-up. Be nice to my sister slash wife. <laughs> Everybody thinks you're younger than me, Jill. They don't realize you're a lot older. Yeah. Seriously so older. So much older. You're on the other side of the mic. Nobody can hear you. So I can say all sorts of things now. Jill's really old. So much older. <laughs> the Brown Hotel in Louisville had pretty good Wi-Fi. I think we're staying at the, what is it's it? That? Marriott. Marriott. We're at the Marriott in downtown Louisville. Bradley made a live stream. Appreciate it. Doing good. I'm about to try some of these Taconics out of New York here. Uh, these are three bottles, but I swear I have more. So let me glance. I know we've got, yep, yeah, there they are. So I'm not going to try all of these tonight, but because I know like the maple finish, I didn't love. This is their straight bourbon whiskey, Duchess Private Reserve. This is their bottled in bond, which you know I tend to be a sucker for right there. This is their straight bourbon whiskey in barrel strength. This is double barrel maple bourbon, which we're just going to sit over here because I love the syrup, but not the bourbon. And this is their single barrel straight bourbon whiskey, Horse and Jockey. What is this? 62, ooh, 125 proof single barrel. So I'm assuming it's their barrel proof, which is 115. So I'm assuming it's barrel proof single barrel whiskey right there. 
Oh, we so truck. Um, we did a hot brown when we were in Louisville bourbon hunting. So should see that. Um, and that hot brown, unfortunately, unfortunately, that hot brown um, did a little damage to the plumbing system in the boat we were renting. It's not my fault. So, and I'm gonna say I, in the video, I'm gonna say sorry, Nate, but Nate's the owner of the boat, not Uncle Nate, um, because uh, that hot brown. We had a little clogging situation in the boats. Because a hot brown goes in hot, comes out hot. Douglas just made it. Jill just bounced, unfortunately, but I appreciate it. Get Starlink. I, that's true. I, I probably need to do that, Gary. Although in a hotel, I don't know how that would work. Uh, Bluebird bourbon from Bluebird Distillery in Pennsylvania? Bluebird makes buses, right? Sipping on Old Elk Weeded. Nice. New York bourbon I have issues with. Overpriced does not deliver. I don't know what the price of these bottles are. Um, I just got introduced. I was looking for anything in New York that might be good. Chris says, what do you think of the different High West options? Um, I, I need to try more High West stuff. It's been a while. I really like their Burr Rye last time I had it. And I've had the Midwinter Nights Dram, which is pretty good. But honestly, I don't think I've ever owned a bottle of their normal stuff. Um... Eagle Rare Tenure for $42 at Total Wine in San Diego. Y'all go grab that. Let's start with the bottled in box. When are you planning on coming to Virginia and checking out Silverback? So I have Silverback back there. Um, I have some Silverback. Somebody sent me some Silverback. Luckily, you know, it's a great thing once I post a video oftentimes people reach out and it's like, hey, if you're looking for that bottle, I can get it. Um, I need to explore it a little more. It's a two-year-old whiskey. The one I have is two years old. Now it's blended with MGP, so it's their two-year-old distillate blended with MGP, what it appears. And it's it's good, but it's like it's two years old. Like, do I do, I do it now or do I wait a year or two when maybe they're putting out their own four-year distillate? Um, I did not talk about the Old Forester 1924 label. So apparently Old Forester is coming out with a 1924. Um, I forget the specifics of it. I watched a bunch of crap on it today, and I forget exactly what it's going to be, but it looks like it's going to be freaking exceptional. McKenzie's. All right, so this is Taconic Bottled in Bod. Thanks, Bob. I'm glad you like that Frey Ranch. So this is good whiskey. Nothing wrong with this whiskey whatsoever. There's nothing in that bottled in bond where I'm like, oh my God, though, right? Like it's good whiskey, but there's nothing that just grabs me and makes me fall in love with it. Like all the notes are just kind of middle of the road bourbon. Maybe a little bit too much oakiness on it for me. I don't know, the oaky, I, it's not a ton of oak. It's just a touch bitter on the finish. Now, there were, I've tried all these bottles. There were one of these that I really liked, but there was only one where I'm like, okay, now we're talking about something that might be a little bit special, and I'm thinking it was this bottle. So we'll save that one for last. All right, butter, slow down there, man, slow down. You know, I've been drinking 150 proof Canadian whiskey. If I can do it, you can do it. Slow down. Matthew, Wild Turkey 101 is fantastic, man. Like fire ashes? Yeah, I, I've heard that campfire is pretty, pretty smoky, uh, Michael, so I, that's why I've kind of avoided it. Middle West Spirits that makes a double cast six-year. You should definitely try if you ever find yourself in the Midwest. I've heard it. Um, I've heard of Middle West, but I've never tried any of their whiskey. Some Brooklotic. Did I get that right? Is it? Did I get it right? Did I finally pronounce... A scotch right. Is it Brooklatic? S. Myers with the $1.99 Super Chat. Have you tried Peyton Manning Sweet & Co.? I have not. Um, they used to be super expensive. They've been winning some awards, getting high on a lot of lists. But I, I hear they use a lot of George Dickel, and that just concerns me because I'm just not a fan of the Dickel. I don't like a Dickel. Again, that one that one's getting a little more interesting. There's like 
some interesting kind of tea notes on that. So that's got some interesting notes. A little, honestly, if you'd have just handed me that, I would have said it's a Willet product. So it's got some of that kind of mid palate sweetness and kind of some of those like herbal tea notes that I get on a Willet product, which makes it pleasant. But it's kind of got an interesting, little bit off putting kind of peppery tobacco finish. No dickle tickle. I don't like my dickle tickled. Uh, Taconic straight bourbon whiskey barrel strength right here. For $60, it's overpriced. The sweet, is that the sweet and coke? Brook Lottie. Dang it. I still screwed it up, didn't I? Brook Lottie. It's got a CH, man. Like, come on. That sounds like, it, I thought they would go with a K on that. <laughs> uh, I mean... I don't know if Brook Laddick if if Brook Laddick is as good as Lagavulin. Just see if I could just irk some folks while I'm at it, right? That very much tastes like this, but at barrel strength, which makes sense. Again, just kind of I don't know if my taste buds are dead from that Canadian whiskey. I may literally have died a little bit on the inside from that 150-something proof. But I would probably like that barrel strength the best. But I, I want to say it was this guy that I thought was the best out of these. Uh, the blackened I have is fine, Toby, but not special. Now, I've heard some of the other expressions they've done have been really good. So maybe I just messed up and bought the wrong one. I mean, the one I bought was on clearance for like 20 bucks, And that probably tells you something about the one that I picked. Four Roses, Maximus. Four Roses is great stuff. I love the single barrel, barrel strength. Excuse me. Beautiful pronunciation. I am an enunciator. Troll trigger. Hey, I'm a little bit of a troll. That's how we got here. Just a little bit. Um, Any of these worth it? So here's my thing about bruisal scores, guys. Let's, let's get serious for a minute. We, we're going to talk heart to heart here for just a minute. And Lord, I'm over here looking at my stream over here on this thing, and I don't know if my computer's way, oh, I'm way behind. Um, make sure y'all are caught up, because my stream over there was way behind. Jill was still on the stream on my screen over there. Uh, Bruzel scores. Here's the thing, here's the thing. I don't think that highly of my opinion. Like, I just don't think you should be judging whiskey completely on my opinion. And so I'm trying to, gather enough money to build uh, a system to where we can score things together, right? So it's not just my opinion, it's our opinion that is scoring something and, and giving it a bruisal score. So I think bruisal score has merit, but I want it to be bigger than just my opinion. And every time I give my opinion on something, I just get a ton of freaking hate in the comments. And it's like, it's just an opinion, folks. You know, it's it's not, I'm not saying it's the right opinion or a wrong opinion, it's just an opinion. And honestly, anytime you put, like, there's a reason there are no other content creators that rank it in a way to where you can stack up a ranking versus a previous ranking. None of them. There's like, okay, we did an award system. Here's the whiskeys of the year, top 10, top 20, top 100, whatever. But then next year's releases, you know, don't, don't play into that. Um, or it's just like, I liked it. This is good. This is A tier. This is whatever, right? Um, nobody ranks them. Because day to day, taste to taste, they're like your palate's just different. Some days you're just generous. Like I was coming in here giving stuff and I, I was like, man, it's just, that's not, I don't enjoy that better than this whiskey I rated two months ago when I was being a little more over the top. And so we got to figure out how to combat that, right? And maybe we're just constantly re-ranking the ones that we ranked and moving them around. I, I don't know. Um, the the issue on that, but it's it's not very scientific like I was hoping it would be, and so it's a little iffy. Oh uh, yeah, we're, so we're talking. Here's what we're talking about, and I y'all tell me if y'all would be interested in this, right? We're talking to a company right now that does something similar about a subscription club to where we send out four samples every month, and then we do a live stream to where we all get together and we try those four samples. 
And so everybody scores them, and you don't know what they are. I don't know what they are. I mean, I probably have a general idea, but I don't know which one's in which bottle. Um, but we would curate four samples, and then we try them together, and then we all rank them, and when we're done with the live stream, it'll then show you what those bottles were. Um, that's my thinking to try to get a bunch of them, and then eventually that'll play into the Bruzel app that we're working on. Um, I've had some blue run, Daniel, and it's really good. I like the stuff I have. Adskis from Canada. That's the one I think I like the most right here, and that is Taconic Straight Bourbon Whiskey Duchess Private Reserves. I don't know what's up with the Private Reserve, if that's a single barrel or what, but that's the one I think I like the most. It's got really strong caramel notes to it. Overall, all of these are pretty good whiskeys, but I'm looking for something that really stands out with my palate. And this, the, the stronger caramel notes on this one make it just a little bit elevated versus the rest of them for me. Uh, I have not tried Batch 12. It's like a $300 bottle everywhere I see it, and I just can't bring myself to buy it. Jira Wright, what's Owa? Weller Antique 107. So um, there's some acronyms. A lot of things have acronyms, right? Especially if you're in the buy sell groups on Facebook, they all have acronyms because everybody wants shorthand and they don't want you to know what they're, you know, don't want Facebook to know at least what they're selling. Um, so Weller Antique, right here, this bottle. This bottle is, it says Weller Antique 107 down below, but the old bottles used to say Old Weller Antique. And so O-W-A, Old Weller Antique. They dropped the old because I think it's not as old as it used to be. But there you go. Jay uh, Pinelli? Pinelli? Hopefully I got that right. Welcome to the Three Proof membership. Make sure if you're a member, if you're a supporter here or on Patreon, make sure you're in the Discord. I mean, you don't have to be. But if you're in the Discord, hit us up. Make sure you're in the supporter-only channels. 107 is about my favorite as well as EHT Single Barrel. I, I think both of those are exceptional. Love those. Sherry Cask Rabbit Hole is pretty good. Um, I don't think I've had that one. Oh, yeah, Bob. Oh, was where it's at. I did try the Rocktown. Now, Rocktown reached out about the time I bought one. Um, the one I have is a little too little too bitter oak for me. Like it's, It feels like it's a small barrel or it was in intense heat or something. But uh, Justin, how do you buy the barrel picks? When they're available, you'll find them on Bruzel.com. Uh, there are none available right now, but they're coming, right? So I've picked, I bought two barrels. I bought a rye from um, Clyde Mays. I bought a bourbon from Clyde Mays. Those will be coming probably September-ish. We are working on something really cool. And I want to I want to share with y'all, I've, and I think we may have talked about this the last live stream, but some of y'all may not have been here. I've I've decided to try to do something kind of dumb. Um, it's a little a little ambitious. I don't know if I can pull it. I don't think I could pull it off. I'm gonna be honest with you. I just don't think I can pull it off. But we went to um, Crittenton's. I bought two barrels from Crittenton's, and those are gonna be fantastic barrels. Um, the four grain especially is a really really special barrel. And then I bought a rum finish rye. Um, but we're going to try to sell Crittenton's only sold 6,000 bottles last year of their bottle in bond, which I think is a fantastic bottle of whiskey. Matter of fact, that's what we're going to finish the night off with. We might try a little of this four grain from silverback, but let's, uh, where's my Crittenton's right here. They only sold 6,000 bottles of this last year. And so when that video comes out and I've, I've, already, I've gone down there, I filmed it. I don't know when it'll come out. It'll come out when the when the barrel picks are ready. I don't want the bottle, or I don't want the video until the barrel picks are ready. Um, I'm going to see if we can't get 6,000 of these bottle and bonds sent to New York to share with everybody. Like, I want to sell, I want to double the production of this distillery. So you'll be able to get our barrel pick, but you'll also, if you can't get that, we're going to have 6,000 of these cut above bottle and bonds available, which is, to me, the best whiskey made in Mississippi. Still live, Cindy. I appreciate you joining. Grand Rapids, Michigan. Awesome. 
Um, I'm going to be up in Michigan. We're going to go to the Bourbon Junkies thing in, what is that, August? The Bourbon Junkies meet up in, uh, I think it's in the Detroit area. I forget the exact suburb of Detroit that they have that in. Uh, Barrel King Juice out of Missouri. No, but I've seen a lot of hype around um, AD, Mad at ADHD Whiskey's Barrel King. So I need to I need to check on that Barrel King. I've never heard of it. And I don't, honestly, I didn't know I, it was out of Missouri until you just said that. Uh, Toby, Texas whiskey's like an acquired taste. I'll drink it every once in a while, but it's never something I'm going to go to often. And when you say Texas whiskey, I'm talking about like that Garrison Brothers profile, like that really kind of leathery um, whiskey, something like Still Austin. That's good stuff. Like that, I couldn't even tell that was Texas whiskey. Antique 107 isn't even $60 here. Well, just buy it all. Send it to me. Thank you, S. Myers. Um, it, it shouldn't be too long. I don't know. Like, we're a little behind on editing. So, we're right now, we're dropping videos pretty inconsistently. But our goal is to, by the end of July, to be back to trying to drop one a week. Uh, Stag Jr. or Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof? That is a tougher question. I like the sweetness that Buffalo Trace provides. So, I would probably go Stag Jr. for myself most times. But that Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof stuff is fantastic. Put respect on the Garrison's name. Like, I like it. And there's been a few times, like, we've had folks over and we've just fallen in love with a particular bottle of Garrison Brothers and just drank it all. But I never come down here and sip it by myself. Haven't had Iron Root. Chris made the first live. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out. Aberfeldy 12? I don't even know what that is. What the price would be. So, Richard, you talking about this? I don't know if you're talking about this Crittenden stuff. These bottles are about 50 bucks a bottle here. Uh, yeah, I've had some Yellowstone. Yellowstone's good stuff. Trying to find Frey, can't find it. Matthew, where are you located? Uh, Russell's Reserve 10-year, good whiskey. Like, that's a good whiskey. I, the Russell stuff, so I like the Wild Turkey. I like Wild Turkey 101. I like Rare Breed. The Russell stuff tends to have a little more bitter oak. And so, like, the mid-palate and the finish is just all kind of bitter oak to me. So, I like it, but that usually is a little bit of a turnoff unless some days, like, I went to one of my favorite things in the entire world is to be proven wrong, to have a strongly held opinion and to find out that opinion's wrong. Like, people, people get upset about that. They're like, you're wrong. I want you to prove, like, they think they've got me but they don't realize that I want to be proven wrong on everything. Like, I love being wrong. It's fantastic. Um, so I went to a bar the other day. Um, I was in Orlando. I went to a bar. Let me hit that super chat real quick. S. Myers with the $1.99 super chat. Is a double eagle rare ever available in Alabama? Only during the Alabama ABC lottery, and it's almost always only one bottle, and you got to win the lottery and be in the right, the right place. So the lottery's in like eight or nine different places. You got to win the lottery at the right place, and you don't ever know which place that is. So never, never available. Those are ten, twenty thousand dollar bottles on the secondary market. But I went into a bar the other day in Orlando, and they had the latest release of Russell's Reserve Thirteen. And I like I had the second release, and I just wasn't a huge fan. Like it's good, but it's like I'd just soon drink Russell's Reserve Ten. That's the video we put out. And so I had a pour of their 13. It was, it was fairly reasonable for a bar, 20, 25 bucks for a pour. And it was a corporate expense. So it wasn't on my card. It was on one of our partner's cards. So I tried it and it was so freaking good. Like it is so much better than my bottle. So maybe the second release was just the worst one. Maybe that first release was special. But whatever they, I don't, and I, I say it's the latest release. It's a bar. I assume it's the latest release, but it was freaking fantastic. So I, I owe Russell's Reserve 13 just a little bit of an apology there um, because the one I have is, it's good. It's not fantastic. But that one I had at the bar was very much fantastic. In Colorado, okay. So you're probably not going to find Frey, but you can order it online. Go to Frey Ranch's website. They sell it. You probably can't get the cash strength. If they can ship whiskey to you, you can go to California. There's some stores in the Discord. Folks have been posting stores that have some barrel strength store picks out of California, San Francisco in particular, that'll actually ship them out. So 
Um, go to Frey Ranch's website. You can order it off of there. You're going to have to pay shipping or check Discord. Um, they've, they've been posting barrel picks that uh, different stores have had online that, that will ship. I don't know if they'll ship to you, right? I don't know the rules in Colorado. 112 with the 499 Super Chat. Enjoying a little double oak Woodford Reserve. Appreciate it, man. Love the show. Keep up the great work. That's a good bottle. Enjoy that one. Chris just finished Russell's 10 last night. We compare it to Rare Breed and love it. Ah, it's a little different. Like, it's a, it's a little different experience. Uh, it's equally as good if the oak doesn't hit you as, as off-putting, right? The Rare Breed tends to have a little more sweetness to me. And the Russell stuff tends to be a little more oaky. But both are exceptional pours. I just prefer the sweetness over the oakiness. How do you know if it's a two or three? I I don't really know. I don't really know. I just know, like, I think they've dropped three or four at this point. I'm just saying it's in a restaurant. A restaurant like this one that's a high-volume restaurant, they didn't have it long is all I'm saying. So it's fairly recent. But I think there might be proof differences on them. But I don't, I don't know what those proofs are, Charles. Mamuka 1977 with the $5 Super Chat. I want to wish everyone a happy Memorial Day. Uh, make sure we lift the glass and cheers and thank them all who sacrificed so much. Absolutely. Appreciate that. Uh, killed half a bottle of Ruff, Russell's 10 and Buffalo Trace. I tried to say Russell's 10 and Buffalo Trace in one word. It almost come out of Ruffalo 10 Trace. Uh, Russell's 10. Oh, I'm going to take Eagle Rare all day. Like, I'm going to take Eagle Rare all day. It's not That's not even close for me, Eric. But again, I like the sweetness, and Buffalo Trace delivers that. Uh, my favorite proof is like 100 to 107 proof. That's usually what I'm going for in a whiskey. Dalton's tuning in from Kentucky for the first live stream. Well, thanks for joining. I appreciate you hanging out with me. Old Forster 1920 for Memorial Day. That's a good, that's a good pull. Uh, Buffalo Trace Experimental 12-Year Weeded. Oh, I'd love to try that. That's a good one. Got me. Might be a good one. I haven't tried it. Let me know, though. Almost a pair. How do we help you get to become an actual pair? $2 Super Chat. Much love from Opelika. Go dogs, Man, Opelika in the house. I need to try. I'm going to have a little sample of this here in just a second, but... We got to soft pedal it. That Canadian whiskey's going to my head. Now, it's hard to go wrong with a 1920 for sure. Uh, again, I'm going to take Eagle Rare. The only thing Rare Breed's got to me is the proof. Um, I do like the proof on the Rare Breed more than the Eagle Rare. I just wish they would take Eagle Rare back to 101 proof. That's what it used to be. Uh, Pappy, $130 for a two-ounce pour. Which Pappy was it, though, Brett? Was it the 10, the 12? Like, technically, those aren't pappies. We'll argue that another day. But we're talking 15, uh, 20, 22, 23. Like, what, are, what was it? How's that Thomas Handy Sazerac? Okay, so, Colby, that Handy Sazerac is okay. It's decent. It's a, it's a, it's a good whiskey, not worth the hype. This, this year's, or actually technically last year's Handy Sazerac rye is far and away superior to that bottle. Like one of my favorite rides like that. We had a bunch of folks over a few weeks ago and it was rye themed. So everybody brought a rye and somebody brought the handy rye from last year. And I put my best rides on the table and I had some good ones. That K Luke batch one rye was fantastic. I think it was batch one. Fantastic. Um, I brought out my Mictor's barrel strength rye, which was fantastic. And that handy Sazerac was right there with them. Like maybe, maybe a little better than some of them. Um, so really, really good bottle. If you just want it, I assume it's last year's. It's fantastic. Logan Martin with the $1.99 Super Chat. June ABC Lottery. We'll see Jack 10, 12. I'd love to get a bottle of that 12. I, I put out, that's one of those bottles. I put out word to everybody. And I think I've got a friend out in California that has secured one, but I just haven't been out there. Um, to, and I, I haven't even been home to try to make that deal work. But I definitely need, I've got Jack 10. It's what last year, year before last is that release. Uh, but I haven't had the 12. 80 proof for Manhattan's, nothing wrong with that. Uh, Woodford, I'm not a huge fan of just normal release Woodford. Like it's not bad, but it's not something I go to. Double oaked, 
fantastic. Their limited release stuff, their like master distiller stuff is normally awesome. Uh, Mark, Baker 7's one of my favorite Jim Beam products. I like the old bottles, like the what they, the new ones are single barrels. I have a bunch of the Dusties, um, the one, the previous design, and I like those a lot. 107 proof, like it's just hard to beat. 400 to $500 for a Jack Daniels 10 year? I like it. I don't like it that much. Like you're, that's Coy Hill territory. Evergreen in Kentucky next week. $30 for a one ounce of the Russell's Reserve 13 and $25 for a Parker's Heritage. I would pay that for either of those at a bar for sure. Tim got a 10 and a 12 last week. Man, had a good week. That is that is a good freaking week. Um, few in Chattanooga, but they're sticker shock at 250. Yeah, that's that's a bit much. Uh, most underrated distillery. It's hard to have an underrated distillery these days. Because if it's good, it's gonna get hype. That's why I'm spending most of my time trying to explore small places that most people have never heard of, right? Like the Silverback right here, or the Crittentons we were drinking earlier, Ben Holiday. Um, just trying to explore distilleries that most people don't know about, like Frey Ranch. But like, can you say, like Frey Ranch hits with anybody. That's as good as anything on the market. But like, can you say that's underrated? Like, I don't think you could say it's underrated because every, everybody who has had it is singing its praises at this point. That's not underrated. Oh uh, yeah, I've, a lot of Knob Creek 12 year. The man with no name. Uh, Old Camp Peach Pecan. I think we did a short on that a while back. Not That's not my thing. Not something I'm going to drink a lot of. $39 for a GTS 20? A George T. Stag 20? I don't know what you mean by 20. Like that George T. Stag is not going to be 20 years old. So I don't know what you mean. Oh, 2020 release. The tw year 2020 release. George T. Stagg, I assume. Um, that's a good one. I, that's the one I've got open on the bar right now. That's a good bottle. Green River. So I have the Green River bourbon. I don't love it. I bought the Green River weeded based on some recommendations, but then I screwed up and left it in Louisville. So I never even got to try it. So when I go to Louisville, I'm hoping that bottle still, I, I left it at a, at a friend's house. Um, in Louisville. So that and my Frey Ranch cash strength are sitting there. So I hope I get those back and I hope it is good. Peerless is underrated. I could be. I like Peerless. Um, I don't know if it's underrated. It's one of those. It, Peerless has some strong flavors to me that some folks love, some folks don't. So I don't know if that makes it underrated or overrated, but it's really good. Cooper's Craft 100 probably is one that's underrated, but that, that's not a distillery that's underrated. That's just maybe one of their releases. Like the Cooper's Craft 80, don't care anything about it, but the 100, the one bottle I had was actually really solid. So that's a good suggestion. Uh, my thoughts on Peerless. Again, I like Peerless. Uh, fantastic bottle. Like one of the best bottles on the market. Uh, the whiskey inside's pretty good. Their finished stuff is extreme to me. We went to Peerless when we were up there to do that first Bruzel pick, and it was like we got sold on everything. We bought every bottle they had for sale that day. I spent way too much money at Peerless. Um, those are some of them I haven't even opened. Like I didn't even like them there. Jill loved them, and she doesn't come down here to drink them. So I like their normal bourbon, but their stuff has a lot of flavor, and you just got to like those flavors. And if you like those flavors, great. And I do, I do on their bourbon. But even their finished stuff, like they put a lot of flavor in there. Old Charter? Uh, that's not good, man. That's not, that's not, oof. Uh, I tried it. So if you, I think I bought it, I either bought it in a, one of the Arkansas videos or the Arkansas video or the Missouri video. I bought Old Charter. We actually tried it at the end and I think it might have got cut out because the first video we did... I thought it would be fun if I did these bourbon hunting videos and then at the end, we tried all the bottles that we actually bought. So we tried a bunch of bottles at the end of one of them and the retention graph, like once I got to me trying them, nobody cared. Like everybody bailed at the end of that video. And so it's like, well, nobody wants to watch me drink them. They just want to watch me hunting for them. So then we cut out and I think the old charter review got cut out of one of those. It was not, not special. 
Old tub for a daily drinker? Eh, not my thing, man. Not my thing. But, hey, you do you. Baker 7, I'm looking for. Worth the hunt. Pretty good bottle. I like the Baker 7. Uh, best E.H. Taylor? Uh, you know, I don't know. I like the barrel proof. I haven't tried any of the super limited stuff. But honestly, that single barrel hits so nice. Uh, Master Chef. Yeah, I've, I've got a bunch of K. Luke stuff here. I stopped at his... Uh, li he owns a liquor store. Mas Masiano's Liquor Store. Uh, somewhere in South Mississippi. I stopped there when I was down at Crittenton's doing my barrel pick. Talked to him for a while about maybe doing something on his next blend. Coming down, documenting the process of his blend. Um, but I've got several bottles of K. Luke here, and they're really good. They are good stuff. And I think it varies greatly from batch to batch because he's doing something completely different with each one. But the one I have is fantastic. Can I drink in golf? Man, I can't golf and not drink. Like, that's like I, I suck at golf to start with. Drinking does not make me worse at golf. Tasted like watered down Buffalo Trace. I mean, maybe I just didn't like it. I don't. It wasn't. Was I? I have a bottle here somewhere. I gotta have it. Where's it at? I don't think we did anything with it. I probably hid it somewhere. JTS Brown. It's not that. I gotta have it here. It's gotta be back here. So up oh, there it is, right there. Old Charter. Y'all see how much we drank out of that. Never going back to that one. Haven't had I.W. Harper 15 year. People golf sober? That's what I, I... Tiger Woods is drunk every time I see him. He's got to be. He's got to be. And, and, of course, I kid. Like, don't send me a cease and desist, Tiger Woods. I'm just joking. Where in the world can you get Antique 107? It takes some effort. I don't know where you're located, but apparently Ohio or Texas. I don't know. Haven't had the JT Mellick. Um... Yeah, Knob Creek Nine's fantastic. That's a good bottle, for sure. Uh, and I like the uh, Knob Creek Nine cash strength even better. For 15 bucks, what's better than Old Charter? <sighs> what sells for $15? Like, I don't even know what sells for $15. Um, for $17.99 here, I can get an Evan Williams bottle and bond, and that's like 157,000% better than this whiskey. Um... But then, okay, so let's look at cheap whiskey that I've got here. Um, Old Barton, maybe? Um, I've got to have some cheap stuff that would beat that. But I don't, I don't know the prices on these right off the top of my head. Let's see, the JTS Brown back there. I, I don't know. I don't know what sells for $15 or less, but I, I'd i rather just spend two more dollars for something good. Melicorn's 18, so that's not less than 15. Like, this smells delicious. This is the silverback that I've just been sniffing. This smells like a nice oaky creme brulee. Like, it is very sweet vanilla caramel. Like, just... Wonderful nose on that bottle. And the tastes are just a... The nose throws me off. Because the nose is like... 8, 9 out of 10. The taste delivers on a lot of those flavors, but it's just much more subdued and muted than the, um, than the nose is on that. So I think if they're blending this, this is it says small batch four grain aged two years, non-chilled filtered, 92 proof. And I'm pretty sure like this is blend number seven. And I'm pretty sure back here it says it's a blend of distilled in Virginia and Indiana. So I'm pretty sure they take their two-year-old distillate and they blend it with MGP. And if their two-year-old distillate blended with MGP has those notes on it, my oh my, is that gonna be delicious when it is four years old and they don't have to blend it out. Like, give me a hundred proof of that and I will absolutely love it. But for now, it's a little muted, it's a little subdued, but I still like all the flavors that I'm getting on that. I was just 
on the nose, I'm expecting it to be like, oh my God. And then it's just a little more um, subtle than that. I haven't had Old Elk Cigar. I need that though. What time is it? Where are we at to? We're at 9.39. After this, we're going to jump into Discord and hang out with folks for just a little bit in the supporters only group. So if you're um, a channel member here or if you're a patron, make sure you're in the supporters channel. If not, just send me or an admin over there a message and we'll get you all set up. Is Benchmark better than Old Carter or Old Charter? Excuse me. Um, not the Benchmark 8. Maybe. I mean, I'd have to try Benchmark 8. It's been a long time. But uh, the top floor, all of those, I would say so, yes. Celtics got beat. Oh, man, I was hoping to catch the end of that. That sucks to come all the way back and then to get beat. That's got to suck. That doesn't smell bad. It doesn't smell bad. Uh, I've got a video coming out here pretty soon. We had a company want to sponsor us and, and send us a humidor. So I took that and I took it as a, let's just do a video asking people what kind of cigars we should get into. Because I, I do enjoy them. I just don't smoke them a lot here. I normally smoke them when I'm around other people that are into cigars. It's not quite over, but it's over. I understand. Benchmark top floor. Oh, the benchmark stuff's good. Down 11 with a minute 21. There's just nothing good about that to me. It's not terrible. It's not, oh my God, this is awful. It's just nothing good. Arturo Fuente. I got three of the Pappy Van Winkle cigars over there, but I, they stayed in the car for like four days. I don't know if they're going to be any good once I actually get around to lighting them, but we'll see. Brandon with the Five Proof Membership, member for one month. Appreciate the support. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Benchmark full, the benchmark stuff's good. If y'all haven't tried it, jump on that. CAO Brasilia is a good budget cigar. Just 80, I mean, true, it's not high proof. You don't expect a lot out of it. So if you're just talking about a cheap bottle, if I were making old fashions or something with that, it'd probably be fine. But there's just like, you're in like ancient, ancient age territory price wise. Now, I don't know, I I haven't seen a 750 milliliter ancient, ancient age in a long time. So I'm buying the 175s for $25. And that's in Alabama where things are normally more expensive. And so you're in that territory, and that is just in every way a similar but superior whiskey. So I just can't get on that train. So, Colton, according to, like, this versus ancient age might actually be a pretty good fight, but versus ancient, ancient age, this doesn't stand a chance, man. Your father's the judge. My father's the judge cigar is my go-to. Like, that's a mouthful. It's like you're naming a racehorse. My father's the judge. 65 bucks for Frey Ranch after shipping, it's worth it. It's worth it. Just go ahead and do it. Black Patch Whiskey out of Huntsville? I have not heard of This is literally the first time I've ever heard of it. Uh, are they making their own whiskey? Are they sourcing it? Is it good? You let me know. My father's makes good cigars. It sounds like we've got some broken English. I, I mean, my father's is the name of a cigar company. The Judge is a car. Yeah, the Pontiac GTO. The Judge... Yeah, Robert, that's what they were saying. Celtics are pretty much out. Um, so I I bet on like one horse for one of the sub races. I lost all my money. And I just wasn't waiting in line for 45 minutes again to try to bet again. Uh, Jeremy's asking, where is it $65 shipped? So y'all y'all let him know where to just Google. Don't link to it. I don't think you can post links in here, but let him know where to find it. Um, So 
David, we're not accepting samples at this point. I appreciate it though, but there should be a PO box in the uh, in the bio. How does CYPB taste compared to Weller Antique 107? To me, the CYPB is much more muted and subdued. The proof is lower. What is CYPB? 95 proof? Is that right? Um, can't read. Like, like that gold on the white label is tough to read. But I think it's something like that. It's like... It's a little higher proof than the uh, Special Reserve, but it's a good bit lower proof than the 107. I prefer the 107 to this. So what's the difference between Ancient Age and Ancient Ancient Age? One of them is just like a drain pour, and one of them is a decent whiskey. I think, realistically, the Ancient Ancient Age is a little older. Um, I want to say Ancient Ancient Age is 90 proof, but Ancient Age may be 80 proof. Um, I, again, I could be wrong about that. It's been a long time since I've tried. Yeah, so this one's 80 proof. I think Ancient Age is 80. Ancient, Ancient. It used to be 10 years old. It used to be Ancient, Ancient Age 10 year. Uh, but then they dropped the age statement, called it 10 star for marketing purposes. But it's a lot better than Ancient Age. Uh, Chris, I don't have a good answer, but, you know, maybe sometime next year, year after, I might have a good answer working on that, but I don't, I don't know where to purchase it online. Um, we've talked about having some sponsors for that, but it just like, I just got to have folks that I really trust to recommend them to y'all. And I, I just haven't found anybody that I really trust. Plus there's like whole rules and regulations here on YouTube that just might not work in our favor there. So we're trying to not do anything that's going to get us in trouble. Padron 1964. Awesome. Tim's drinking that Frey Ranch. That's It's a good bottle. If you haven't tried it, I, I can't recommend it enough. Oh, uh, okay. What is MGP? So MGP is Midwest Grain Products, now known as Ross and Squibb. Um, they are a large distillery out of Indiana that a lot of uh, brands source from. So when you're first starting a whiskey brand, like at some point we want to do our own whiskey brand. We're, we're having some conversations. We are a lot of money away from being able to do that at this point, but we want to do our own. And so we won't distill because that takes four years, at least not right off the bat. So we would source whiskey. We would buy whiskey that's already been distilled. And MGP is one of those companies in Indiana that a lot of folks buy their whiskey from. So like Penelope, that's so popular, gets all their whiskey from MGP. And a lot of brands do. Doesn't mean it's bad whiskey. It just means it all comes from MGP. I have no idea what I'm doing with the $1.99 Super Chat. Appreciate it. Thank you for the support. Uh, I mean, I'll give Canadian Club 12 a try. I just don't know when it'll be, uh, you know, how long it'll take me to get around to buying a bottle. There's just so many bottles to buy. Would in Michigan try Iron Fish Maple if you haven't had it for a finished? It's not bad. All right, I'll uh, I'll keep an eye out for that. What's the best bourbon I've tried today? What I have today that's the best bottle. Um, so we didn't drink some of those. We didn't drink any of these. I've got a bunch of bottles out, but I didn't try them. So... It's either gonna be, I would ha probably have to blind them because I, I like them pretty close to equally, although I'm really liking this holiday winter wheat right here. Out of the ones I've drank today, that's probably the one I would go back to, or maybe this Crittenden's, like both of those pretty good stuff. Bender with the 499 Super Chat, appreciate the support. Hall of Fame whiskey reviewer. I'm the world's least helpful whiskey reviewer and the world's worst bartender, but thank you for the accolades. Uh, the Frey Ranch rye is good stuff. I don't like it as much as the bourbon, but I don't like rye as much as bourbon. Haven't tried Devil's River Distillery. Ooh, 115 for Blanton's. That's beyond my buy. -in. That's like $100. So I do have, I did uh, manage to secure some of the Japanese Blanton's. So I've got, um, I've got some, the red, Takana red or whatever they're called. And then the uh, the black version of the Japanese Blanton's coming. So I should be able to try those here pretty soon. That's going to be fun. Yeah, the, the 
I, Brett, I'm, I'm with you on that. None of those I've really liked. <laughs> Brenda said, I'm good. I, it's cool. It's fine. They, that was something um, we, we adopted that slogan. We posted some review and somebody's like, this is not helpful at all. So like we changed the whole channel motto to where we're like the least helpful whiskey reviewer. Uh, Blanton's him a hundred dollars or less. That's where I look for. If I see it for a hundred bucks, I buy it. If it's a hundred and one dollars, I don't buy it. Now you do you like, I'm not, I'm not hating. If you pay $120 for Blanton's have a good time. Like, I don't care. It's fine. I have, I did pay $120 for Blanton's once cause I needed it cause I was giving it away. I needed it as a gift and I didn't have any. So I paid that for it. Um, but for me, a hundred bucks or less. And I, I do that not because I think it's a hundred dollar whiskey necessarily. I do that because we give a ton of them away. Like I went to a conference last week in Orlando. Uh, we gave two away as our booth gift, right? So we, you put your business card in and you, you win a bottle. Um, so we gave a couple of them away. A lot of friends want them, things like that. Blanton straight from the barrel is really solid, but don't sleep on that Blanton's gold there, Jordan. I haven't had any of the Japanese ones, so I'm, I'm excited. Uh, the bourbon hunting van is not coming along, Gary. We have pulled the funding for that, and we are trying to save up. Right now, what I need more than anything is a building. I need a place, and I may rent. I may end up renting. I really wanted to buy a small building, but... Um, we need a place so we can start buying barrels of whiskey and storing them and doing some fun stuff. So how long am I staying live? I don't even know what time is it. It is 9.50, so probably only about 10 more minutes. And then I'm going to jump over on Discord in the supporters voice chat. So if you're a supporter, again, if you're a channel member, if you're a patron, make sure you're in the, the Discord supporter area if you want to be involved in that. If not, send me a DM. I'll try to get you straightened out. Uh, straight from the barrel is good. I like... It depends on the barrel, right? They're very, they vary because they're single barrels. But I like the Blanton straight from the barrel better than most of the Stack Juniors I've had. Yeah, just picked up a gold. It's good stuff. Jim Beam Black Extra Aged versus Double Oaked. Are you talking about like versus Jim Beam Double Oaked or versus Woodford Double Oaked? I don't know. I What Jim Beams do I have? Um, I have the Devil's Cut. I don't think I have, like, I don't drink a ton of Jim Beam stuff, especially if it says Jim Beam on it. I'll step it up and I'll buy like a Baker 7, which is a Jim Beam product or a Booker's or something like that. Legion Field is for rent and I can just put all my bourbon barrels there and age them outside in the rain. Uh, haven't had an Evan Williams 23. Yeah, Maggie is the great, like, that's one of the reasons we pulled the funding is like, I'm just going to take Maggie. Everybody gets mad when I don't bring Maggie. I was in Mississippi. Guy's like, where's where's Maggie at? I was like, sorry about that, man. She's in Ohio. I gotta go get her. Uh Jim Beam Double. I just haven't I haven't tried them. So I need to I need to give them a try. Mike from New Hampshire, what's up? Ooh, if Blanton's gold dropped all over there this week, you need to be buying them. Jason, you need to be buying them. Buy them all. Um, drop in Nashville, got an EHT small batch, Wellers. So, Jared, do you know Big J-Rock there? He's in Nashville as well. Uh, the Wilderness Trail stuff I have is is really good. But I haven't like I haven't had anything from them that just grabbed me. But I haven't had enough stuff from them. I'm sure they've got some stuff because folks tend to like them. Uh, I was going to get a van, Chris. And someday we will get a van. We will do a van. Right now, my main focus is two things. Barrel picks, you know, and making sure I have the cash reserves to commit to those um, trying to be able to maybe buy barrels so we can do our own private label blending at some point in the near future. And um, third, trying to come up with enough cash to build the Brusel app, like a bourbon hunting app. We really want to do that. So bring Maggie. Well, when I did the Missouri trip, um, I wasn't able to bring, like I, don't, I didn't take Maggie on that one. I took the truck on that one. Um, at some point I will. Like she's, she's meant to be road trip. I took her, so when I bought Maggie, I took her to Louisville and back, and she had all sorts of problems. We we had a bunch of issues, but we fixed all of those issues. I just got the sound system done in her, um, so I'm going to I'm gonna go pick her up in Ohio next Sunday, and then I'll drive her to Louisville and back. And if she does well on that trip, we're going to start. Every time I go somewhere, I'm going to try to take her. North Carolina, the 
quarter two, Booker's is coming. Um, how much is Frey Ranch in Georgia? I, it's going to be different everywhere you go, man. They're not super expensive bottles, though. What's the deal with Blanton's? Okay, so Blanton's is the first mass-marketed single-barrel whiskey. Um, it's got a ton of hype. It's made by Buffalo Trace. It comes in a little grenade-shaped bottle. It's got a horse on top. There are eight different horses with different stances and different letters that all spell out Blanton's. Um, but it's just a really nice bottle. It's a good whiskey, but people who are kind of into bourbon absolutely love it. Like, this is their, like, top of the heap. You can actually find it. You've probably tried it. One of your friends has it. But it's still kind of elite, right? So there's, there's like, elite. There's, like, Pappy Van Winkle elite. But you got to be, like, elite elite to get something like that. A William LaRue Weller. Like, that's just, like, unobtainium. This, they make a ton of these. They're just so popular, they're still kind of hard to come by but it's, it's a good whiskey. It's a proof that is approachable for folks that are just kind of into whiskey. It went 93 proof. Um, overall, this is a really good marketing effort with a really good bottle. It's got some pop culture references. If you ever watch John Wick, when he's getting all sewed up because he did a bunch of dumb things, um, this is what he's using as a painkiller. Uh, so overall, nice packaging, great marketing, really good bourbon, um, but... Folks tend to just love it, especially folks that are just kind of into bourbon. They're not super into it, but they're just kind of into it. Haven't seen Frey Ranch is everywhere in Georgia. Every store I went into in Georgia had Frey Ranch uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, I need to. I'll, I'll bring Maggie. If we do a barrel pick, I'll bring Maggie. I borrowed something unforeseen. Here's the thing about Maggie if you go somewhere in Maggie, you can be in a hurry. That's all, that, that's the cry. Am I in a hurry? Yes. Can't take Maggie. If I got to be somewhere and I got like a very short window, can have no side tracks, can't take the Lincoln because you are stopping at every gas station and you are talking for 15 or 20 minutes to somebody. Why are so many people not drinking anymore? I don't know what you mean. I don't know any of those people. I have not tried Old Elk Cigar Cut. Brandon, is alcohol on its way out? No, it's definitely not. It's been here for like a thousand years. I think it's going to keep going. The rarest bourbon I own is probably the Buffalo Trace Antique stuff. Maybe some of those Willet Purple Tops over there. Uh, I mean, Old Fit 17 is pretty rare. Uh, those are the rarest of the rare. I, like, I'm not a guy that chases just rare stuff. Most of the stuff we're buying is up. I'll be so you say rare. These guys have like this guy right here only sold six thousand bottles last year. That's pretty freaking rare. It's Crittenden's out of Mississippi, great small distiller. That's rare. Is it super sought after? No, it's because people don't know anything about it. Um, but it's still rare. So it's probably that. It's got to be this BTAC Pappy stuff back here. That's the at least the most sought after in rare. Gas is only three dollars and nine cents. I like I, I the gas is okay. I'm okay with the gas. It's just a matter of you've got to like normally in my truck I can drive six seven hours and not stop. In Maggie, every like three hours you're stopping for gas, and you know stuff may happen. Like it just it just takes longer to get places especially if you're talking long road trips. It's fun. It's more fun, but it takes a lot longer. So what might be eight hours in my truck might take 10 or 11 or 12 in Maggie, depending on how crazy things get. Steak taco sounds pretty freaking good. Uh, Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend for $206. I'd have probably done that. That's a, it's a bit much, but that's, that's roughly what they go for. Well, I mean, I, so back in the back, I have the rarest bottle. That is the rarest bottle. Most desirable rarest bottle. I have a bottle of Rebel 100 from 1968 distilled at Stitzel Weller. Bought that one at an estate sale. That's probably the rarest of the rare that I have. Uh, yeah, Chaz, man. I mean, there, there are lots of groups like that, both in person. There's some things. I don't know about trade. There's a bunch of buy-sell stuff. I don't know about trade. 
but yeah, there, I mean, you can always make offers. A lot of Facebook groups where people are, are exchanging bourbon. Uh, the BTAC for 2022, the, um, handy Sazerac for this year is the best one I've ever had, but they're all exceptional this year. They were all really good. Eagle Rare is always one of those where I like, I like it, but it's so subtle. Like a lot of the complexity and flavors are subtle on that one. So if you're having like high proof stuff like William LaRue, I don't want to come in with that Eagle Rare because I want to enjoy that on its own, right? I want a fresh palate when I'm having the Eagle Rare 17. Um, and then the Sazerac 18 was good. It's, it's probably one of the better rides I've ever had. But I just don't think I appreciated it as much having it up against the George T. Stagg and the William LaRue Weller. What's the worst take you've ever had about bourbon? I don't have worst takes. man. All my takes are bad. That's what's crazy about it. Um, I don't know. What's the worst take? Is there something back here where I'm like, this is awful. And everybody's like, it's, I don't know. I, I, I stand behind all my takes. Because like everything here is just an opinion. That's all it is. You can't tell me I'm wrong. That's what's funny about half my comments are like, you're wrong. Well, when I share my opinion on something, just like if you share your opinion on something, I'm not wrong. It's my opinion. I'm not wrong on it. You may disagree. Doesn't make me wrong, right? Oh yeah, Weller Antique 107 is definitely getting hard to find for sure. Uh, multiple alternatives to Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. That's a pretty good video. I'm going to have to check that out. I'm going to have to think about I'm going to have to think about that for a little bit, but I like the idea. Lord have mercy, Bender, with the $99.99, $100 Super Chat. That is way too generous. I appreciate this. And then it just dis... Where did it go? Where did it go? Did he delete the Super Chat? Did he immediately give the Super Chat? And it just... I don't know if y'all saw that. But the man dropped, I think he meant accidentally gave way too much money and said, no, thank you. Take that back. I appreciate it. I still appreciate the thought, even though that was nuts. Ah, uh, what's the greatest length? I mean, I waited for, was it two days, 40 something hours for a couple of bottles. That's probably the most length I've gone to. Although I've, you know, I've driven places and, and did things. I don't do a lot of decantering. I just like it in the bottle. I, don't, I dare me have an opinion, exactly. Uh, privately owned liquor stores in Alabama, I used to have a lot of luck, but they've gotten out of hand, man. They're starting to price it higher and higher, so I haven't had a lot of luck. Um, I usually, if I'm going to go to a private store and have any luck, I'm going to go across state lines. Didn't see it. Dude, it flashed. Y'all saw it flash. Super Chat showed up, then it immediately disappeared. Uh, I counted the bottles the other day, and it's approximately 450 bottles right now. And that's everything. That's all the whiskeys I own. What hyped up bourbon doesn't hit the spot? Elmer T. Lee. Probably the most hyped one where I'm just like, not my thing. Honestly, the Weller stuff, like the, um, the CYPB and the Single Barrel, those are great. Don't get me wrong. I like them. They're good whiskeys, but it's like, I just take the 107. I like it even better than these. And it doesn't have quite the hype of those. Um, let's see if there's anything else that's like super hyped where I'm just like, anything that's high malt. The Woodford five malted stouted mash. I just gave that bottle away. Um, let's see. Anything here that was like super hyped where I'm just like, nah. And it wasn't Elmer Teeley was, was bad. It just wasn't as good as it was hyped. I was expecting it to be an experience and it very much wasn't that uh, that's pretty much it that's like that that's that's pretty much it all right guys we are going to call the stream and uh i'm going to jump over on the voice chat for supporters over on discord so if you're a supporter and you're in discord make sure you're in that chat if not hit me up uh, i'm going to try to be live next monday i can't promise anything at this point but we are going i'm going to be in louisville kentucky we are going to try to set up a stream at the hotel. They've got like this really cool bourbon room apparently. And, and we may stream with some of the hotel staff. Um, so appreciate everybody hanging out with me. Um, again, I'll see y'all in the discord and hopefully, hopefully I will see y'all next Monday.